Hey there, welcome to the second episode of Lost Season 1. Get ready for more island adventures and surprising revelations. In this episode, titled, Pilot, Part 2, the survivors face new challenges and make some important discoveries on the island. The episode begins with Charlie, Jack, and Kate returning to the beach with the transceiver they found in the cockpit of the plane. Charlie keeps asking Jack if it's working, but Jack repeatedly responds with annoyance, saying it's not. However, Kate defends Jack when Charlie calls him a coward, stating that he is not. The story then takes us back to the plane just before the crash. An air hostess approaches Charlie and offers assistance, but he refuses. She becomes suspicious of his behavior, suspecting that he may be struggling with addiction. The hostess informs her superiors, and they begin to suspect Charlie is hiding something. In response, Charlie heads towards the toilet to avoid being caught. As the plane experiences turbulence, signaling the start of the crash, Charlie manages to enter the toilet and evade the authorities. Back on the beach, Shannon is lounging in the sun while her brother Boone asks for her help sorting clothes. Shannon declines, believing it to be a waste of time as she still holds hope that help will arrive soon. Meanwhile, Michael approaches Sun and Jin, who are fishing on the beach. He asks Sun if she has seen his son, Walt. Jin, protective of his wife, instructs her to button up her top and expresses his disapproval of her talking to other men. Michael understands Jin's concern and goes off to find his son. Walt, in the jungle searching for his dog Vincent, stumbles upon a pair of handcuffs on the ground. Michael eventually finds Walt and reminds him to stay on the beach. On the beach, tensions arise between Sayed and Sawyer as they engage in a fight. Michael shows the handcuffs found by Walt to the group, and Sawyer mistakenly assumes they belong to Sayed, who had been sitting in the back row of the plane with his hands hidden under a blanket. The misunderstanding leads to a heated argument between Sayed and Sawyer, which Jack steps in to break up. Kate watches the scene but keeps the truth hidden, failing to reveal that she was the one handcuffed on the plane. She changes the subject and informs everyone that they found the transceiver, but it's not working. Said, being the technical expert, states that he needs time to fix it. Sun approaches Kate and asks her, in Korean, to return to the beach. Kate complies and speaks with Said. Sayed informs her that they are not receiving a signal but suggests climbing higher ground to improve reception. He explains that if they can detect any bars on the radio, it means they are receiving a signal that could potentially be picked up by a passing boat, leading to their rescue. However, doing so would drain the battery, which is already limited. Sayed proposes attempting to get a signal from higher ground. Kate approaches Jack and expresses her intention to accompany Sayed to higher ground to send a distress signal. Jack warns her about the dangers they faced the previous night and advises her to run if she sees or hears anything suspicious. Shannon and Boone have a disagreement, with Boone expressing disapproval of Shannon's behavior, particularly her habit of staring at dead bodies. Shannon becomes angry and declares her intention to join Sayed and Kate on their hike. Charlie, Boone, and Sawyer also decide to join them. As the group heads towards the mountaintop, tensions rise between Sayed and Sawyer over whether to turn on the radio and check for reception. Sawyer wants to test it immediately, while Sayed insists on waiting until they reach the top to conserve battery power. During the argument, they hear the mysterious noise again. Charlie believes it's the mysterious thing approaching, potentially to attack them. 
Kate shares his concern, and they start running away with the others, except for Sawyer. Sawyer stays in the jungle, holding his ground and pointing his gun towards the source of the sound. He fires a few shots and discovers that the source of the noise is a polar bear. The bear lies on the ground, taking its last breaths. Boone asks Charlie if he thinks it was the same bear that killed the pilot in the cockpit, but Charlie believes it is just a smaller version of the unknown creature they encountered. The group speculates about the presence of a polar bear on the island. Where did that come from? Sawyer reveals that he found the gun and a U.S. Marshal badge on one of the bodies, sparking suspicion among the group. Kate takes the gun from Sawyer and disassembles it to prevent further conflicts. The scene then flashes back to the plane just before the crash. The U.S. Marshal gets injured by a falling bag, causing him to lose consciousness. Kate manages to find a key to her handcuffs in the marshal's jacket pocket and frees herself. As she does, she catches a glimpse of the tail end of the plane breaking off, an event she mentioned to Jack earlier, explaining why she couldn't bring herself to look back at it. Back on the beach, Jack tends to the injured U.S. Marshal, who abruptly regains consciousness. Jack becomes furious, realizing that the Marshal will now have to suffer through the pain once again. However, the Marshal grabs Jack by the collar and asks him about Kate. The group reaches higher ground on the mountain, and say it turns on the radio. He receives a weak signal, but all they hear is static. Sayed determines that they are not able to transmit a signal due to interference from someone else trying to transmit from nearby. Suddenly, they hear a voice speaking on the radio in French. Shannon, the only one among them who understands French, translates the distress call. The person on the other end, a woman, is saying that everyone with her has been killed, and she is the sole survivor. Sayed realizes that the message is a distress call and has been playing repeatedly for 16 years. This revelation leads the group to believe that there may be other people stranded on the island. Kate suggests that the rescue team may have already come for them, but Sayed questions why the message is still playing if that were the case. Charlie wonders where exactly they are stranded. Guys. Where are we? And that's where the second episode of Lost Season 1 ends, leaving us with more questions and a deeper sense of mystery surrounding the island. Stay tuned for further captivating episodes as we uncover the secrets of Lost.